In this video, we're given a table of data that gives time and the velocity of an object at those times, and we're going to assume that it's always decreasing consistently for this particular problem. So nowhere in here in between these times did it increase its velocity. So we're going to find our approximations for three rectangles. And so first thing we want is to get our delta x, or in this case our delta t, which is the length of our interval divided by the time, uh, it's the length of our time divided by number of rectangles we're going to use. So 1.8 minus 0, we're going to use three rectangles. So for these, we're using 0 0.6. So we're not going to use all the data. So for our left-hand rule, we'll have 0 0.6, and we're going to use the left-hand points. Now remember, the interval goes from 0 to 0 0.6 to 1.2 to 1.8 for the L sub 3. And I want to use the left hand endpoint, so I'm going to be using the fastest time on each interval. So 100 for my first interval. Now my second interval is 0.6 to 1.2. I'm going to use 96. And then my next interval is 1.2 to 1.8. I'm going to use 80. I've already calculated these to save some time. So that gives you 165.6 feet, since we were in feet per second. That's going to be the absolute maximum distance this object could have traveled during these 1.8 seconds. Not bad, but we'll see if we can do a little better. Now the right hand, remember the right hand uses all the same middle points as the left hand. It just doesn't start at the same place. So instead of starting at 100, we're going to start at 96, and we're going to use 96, 80, and 0. So 96 plus 80 plus 0, <clears throat> and the minimum distance we could have traveled was 105.6 feet. Now that we've already got the left-hand and right-hand rule calculated, the trapezoid rule will be very quick because we'll just average the two. Left-hand rule plus the right-hand rule over 2, which comes out to be 135.6 feet. Now, the trapezoid rule, we may want to know if it gives us an underestimate or an overestimate. If we look at our data, not only is it decreasing, but it's decreasing at a decreasing rate. Okay, we're going, we're going to have a graph that would look like this, concave down. If it's concave down, a trapezoid would sit underneath it. So this would be an underestimate. Well then let's get an overestimate using the midpoint rule with three rectangles. So our midpoint rule, again we're not going to use all the data, we're going to use the in-between points. We still have the same delta t, so 0 0.6. Now for our interval 0 to 0.6, the midpoint we are given is 99. For 0.6 to 1.2, our midpoint is 90. <clears throat> and for 1.2 to 1.8, our midpoint is 50. This gives us an estimate of about 143.4 feet. Now, we know that the midpoint rule is more accurate than the trapezoid rule by looking at the errors. And we also know that when it's concave down, the midpoint rule is going to give us an overestimate. So we now have an upper bound and a lower bound on our distance traveled. That's a lot better than what our left and our right hand rule was giving us. We know this object traveled somewhere in between 135.6 and 143.4 feet. If we'd like to get a little bit more accurate, we could do a Simpson's rule, because we have the trapezoid and the midpoint rule. Simpson's rule is 2 times the midpoint rule, plus the trapezoid rule, all over 3. So it's a little bit of a weighted average. And that came out, comes out to be 140.8 feet. So this is going to be a pretty nice, accurate estimate of our total distance traveled. Once we have the total distance traveled, we can get the average velocity over this interval. Remember, average velocity is our change in distance, which we just calculated, divided by our change in time, which was 1.8 seconds. So our average velocity is 140.8 over 1.8, <clears throat> which comes out to be approximately 
78.2 feet per second. So that was the average velocity of this object during this time interval. Now, let's get a little bit more accurate by using some more rectangles and see what we can calculate and what we can't. I won't spend as much time on this, but let's say we want to do the left hand rule with six rectangles. We have enough data to do that. Well, if we're using six, now we're dividing 1.8 by six, so now our delta t is 0 0.3, and we're using each left hand point. So we're going to start at 100, end at 50. So we're going to do 100 plus 99 plus, for time's sake, we're going to end at 50. And that comes out to be 154.5 feet. Closer to what we got from Simpson's rule than with three rectangles, what we would expect. It's going to be more accurate. We're using more data. R sub 6 is going to use not use the 100 and go all the way to 0. So basically, we're going to remove the 100 from here, but do the same calculation. That comes out to be 124.5 feet. We can average those two to get the trapezoid rule with six. The trapezoid rule comes out pretty accurate with six, 139.5 feet. Now, one thing that's interesting, because we're using all the data points, we don't know the midpoints. So we're not going to be able to calculate the midpoint rule with six. But we will be able to do Simpson's rule with six. We're just going to have to do it the, the long way. If we know trapezoid and midpoint, we can do Simpson's rule by doing a linear combination. If we don't, what we have to do is we have to take our delta x, 0 0.3, and divide it by 3. And now, this is the weighting that you saw in the lesson. It's going to be the first output plus 4 times the second output. Now we get this pattern. Plus 2 times the third output. Plus, now it just goes back and forth, 4, 2. So 4 times 90, plus I'm going to have to go down to the next line here, plus now it goes back to 2, so 2 times 80, plus 4 times 50. So you'd always be on a 4 before you go to the last individual one, plus 0. So this will give us Simpson's rule, which, if you calculate this out, comes out to be 140.8 feet. So one thing that was kind of cool here, our Simpson's rule was just as accurate with three rectangles as it was with six. Simpson's rule converges very quickly, so it gets accurate very fast.